Are you filming? Yeah. Sorry. She it's makes okay. pretty collars. No, I edit this part. <laughs> Why? I love this part. It's my favorite part. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to SoCal Socialite. I'm here with a very special guest, my cousin. She just joined me from Northern California to come have a little sewing retreat. So uh, fun. Yep, and we are going to be sewing her a top today. We're going to be sewing new looks, 6560. It is a really cute little wrap top. We're going to be sewing view C, which has some gathers in the shoulder and a tie. What's and this called when there's like no sleeve? It's like all one piece? It's kind of like, is that dolman? Like, it, oh, I feel like a bat wing or something. Yeah. I think mm -hmm. that's what it's called. It's I got kind of like, yeah. It's got a vintage feel, although it's a modern pattern, but this has like a very like 1940s, like, it's got roots in sort of that era, which is what I love. She's, yeah. Yeah. And We're going to be sewing a top for me her way. Yeah. Um, my way is, you know, follow the instructions. Everything is, 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 is exact. This is exact as it can be. Right. We joke and we say she's cutting corners because yes, that's she eyeballs. Oh, yeah. Cutting, cutting corners. corners. So she <laughs> eyeballs things. Yes. She does I eyeball use notches. She doesn't use... I don't use notches. I, I don't use interfacing. Yeah. And this is giving me panic, panic attack. Yeah. But, but she, listen to oh, this, I is don't, now... Oh, yeah, I do. ...ironing pattern pieces. I don't iron them before I cut them, but I do iron That's them. That's okay. At least do that they're after, because I, it drives me crazy when I see people pinning patterns, and they're like, you see those creases, and you're like, if you actually iron that out, your piece is going to be a little bit bigger... I mean, in the grand scheme of things, is it really going to make a huge difference? Probably not, but it's that type of thing. Just for me. Yeah. I don't always this will be interesting. pin patterns to the fabric before I cut well, it. Well, and that's why sometimes you put weights down, and that's okay. Yeah, yeah. And that's okay, but you just that. like, I don't even know, so we're going to see how this goes. Okay. I'm doing this so long, and show them the fabric you've got today. We went to Joann's today. Mm hmm. This is a Joann's exclusive. It is a 90% polyester, 10% spandex. It's very drapey, um, lightweight, and uh, sort of a pretty dark sage green color with a white paisley print. Yep. And so we've already cut our pattern pieces and we've ironed them. And we will show you what we have here. We'll try to go in numerical order because that's... We will start with piece seven, I believe. Six. Seven, six. Six is the front, front facing. Front facing. Then we have seven. Back facing. Back facing. Then we have ten. ten. The it's tie. the tie. Then we have twelve, which is the front. Okay. Thirteen. Yo the yoke front, so here. Fourteen. The back with some darts. Yeah, and 15, which is the sleeve band. So off camera, we are going to go ahead and cut out our pattern pieces. We will not bore you with that. And then when we come back, we will start with step one of constructing the pattern. Hey, wait, fun fact. This is, oh. <laughs> Uh, for view C, <laughs> you could use a contrast fabric for the sleeve band is that, and for the tie. Now, is that your fun fact or is this um, New Lick's fun fact? No, it's mine. <laughs> I think it is. You Personal could. suggestion. No, I, I like that. She does like to tweak patterns. She very rarely actually follows a pattern that to the T. She'll change something. I do things my way. She definitely does. And I, and I like that. I like that adventuresome mentality <laughs> and... You know, why cut notches? Let's just leave it to the wing it! Yes! <laughs> the first thing that you need to do is you need to interface pieces 6, which is the front facing, and 7, which is the back facing. Because we have a very drapey fabric, we've chosen to use Pelon 281, which is a woven stretch, but it's great for lightweight fabrics. Wovens, knits, and stretch fabrics. So the the thing is with interfacing is a lot of people tend to over interface. They use interfacing that is much too heavy for the fabric that they're using. So in this case, because we're using a lightweight 
interfacing and we have a nice drapey fabric. So they complement each other. You still have that drape of the fabric. Because you've applied interfacing, you haven't made the fabric too stiff. And that's really important when you want to maintain the integrity of the drape of the fabric. So we have applied the interfacing to these pieces. And that's all you need is just pieces six and seven. We're going to go ahead, go over to the sewing machine and start stay stitching the bodice and the front yoke. Okay, this is step one in the instructions and it's stay stitching the neckline. This is the back neckline, this is the front neckline, and this is the yoke front right here. So it's important to note when you are stay stitching, which is stitching a regular stitch length a half inch from the raw edge, that you're stitching in this the direction of the arrows. So in this case, we've got the front bodice piece. We're stitching from the, the hem or the waistline up to the shoulder seam. And then you I follow. I stay stitch a quarter inch. You stay stitch, well. Missy, the instructions say a half inch. But I find that a quarter works better for me. Well, she's going to do a quarter. We can't argue with her. This is her shirt, right? So <laughs> we are going to go ahead and she does follow the arrow. So she's got the bodice piece. This is the bottom That's hem. That's the bottom hem. Yeah. And she's and going to stitch up mm -hmm. towards the shoulder. Mm -hmm. And she's going to do a quarter inch because that's what she feels she wants to do. And that's actually fine. It's still within the 5-8 seam allowance. Um, and then you're also going to do it on this yoke piece, so just mind where your notches are. Because that's the neckline too. Yep. And you're going to go up. So go ahead and start. Do we really film this whole thing? It's just stay stitching. So I just want to make a note that in the earlier instructions I was showing you blouse A and B. But we're working on blouse C and the instructions are actually the same and it's just pieces 12, 13, and 14 rather than 1, 2, and 3. So sorry about that, but the steps are the same. So once we do the stay stitching, we're going to come down here to step 2 and gather that shoulder seam. So part of step 1 is to gather the shoulder. And here we have, this is the shoulder seam, this is the neckline. So you see you've got the two notches up here. So let me, where is that notch? I see them, there it is. There's that notch. And then you have the second notch here. So you're gonna gather and by gathering, you'll do a long um, stitch. So like a four or a five, we'll, we'll do a five. And then you're going to do a row between the notches, a quarter of an inch away from the raw edge and then another row um, a half of an inch between the notches and you're going to leave long tails on both sides so you can pull the threads and make your gathers. I'm going to pin it because I can't see these I know, notches. the little notches are... That's... Thank you Katrina for sharing there your tip with us here on SoCal Socialite. <laughs> <laughs> so, step two asks that with right sides together, we pin the front yoke at the forward shoulder seam matching notches, and then we pull the gathering stitches to fit. Baste and then stitch. However, we are going to skip the basting and we're gonna use pins to baste and then we'll stitch straight across. And we've done one of the shoulders and this is what it looks like here. So you see, this is your neckline, here's your shoulder, You've got your edges matching here, and then once you pull in your gathers, um, they'll, the notches will meet. And here we have one of the, the other shoulder not done yet, and Kat is going to demonstrate yeah. how to do this. So I like to bracking. pull the gathers tight first before I pin. Um, I guess the yeah. pattern wants us to not do that, but that seems yeah. crazy to me, so... Yeah, the I'm pattern. gonna ignore the pattern as I often do. <laughs> and I'm just gonna do it my way. <laughs> that's that thing new. I mean, I I agree with that. Like trying to, it's just a little weird because the notches are kind of misaligned and it gets a little right. confusing and annoying. So to actually have 
the shoulders gathered and then match up the notches. It just makes sense. And the result's the same at the end. And I think this way is nicer too because you can make sure that the gathers are nicely spaced. Right? Yeah, think I think so? so too. Yeah. I think that that's true. And so, and, yeah, yeah. I've, I've gotten them really tight here and I'm going to spread them a little bit. Try to get them more evenly spaced. You really got to play with the gathers. You just kind of, it's like, it's like molding clay. <laughs> like molding clay. And this is such a small little space of gathers. Um, right. Except it's really important. This is, this is one of those elements we were talking about that's very 1940s. Mm -hmm. That's sort of like, it's, it's like a gathered panel on the front of the blouse. And I yeah. love that look. It gives it that vintage feel. It's a little extra detail that you wouldn't find on most store-bought clothing, which is what I love about it. And so you want to make sure that you are giving it the kind of attention it deserves so that it looks right when it's laying um, on the and body. This is looking, and it's pretty close. Mm -hmm. Like this notch here. Yeah. Looks good. And this notch... These notches are matched as well. Okay, so, I think so you're going to go good. ahead and pin it. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to pull this down this way. Okay. And I'm actually going to flip this like this so I can pin. Was that easier for watch you? It. Well, I like to watch where my notches are going and pin very carefully. Here we go. These, we're using these really cool um, fine silk pens with glass heads. I prefer glass head pens because you can iron and they won't melt. But these are super fine. And they make um, pinning intricate little pieces like with these gathers a lot easier. Right here I have pinned down my uh, gathers the way I want them to lay. Just so that when I sew and stitch across that I have the kind of look of the gather that I want. So that it's, it's not bunching like all together in one place. Mm -hmm. That it's more spaced out. And so I do kind of an extra layer of pins when I do gathers. Good especially tip. if they're a little detail like this. And you're going to stitch a nice 5 8 inch seam here. Yes. Just all the way across, mm -hmm. back stitch, and then the front, and then the back the, stitch. Well, remember to back stitch and... Do we need to back stitch? Aren't yeah. these all going to be seams? They, okay, well, this one does things differently. I, I You back stitch every time? I do. <gasps> <laughs> oh... All right, kids, see, just showing you that you can do things however you want. <laughs> I do. I backstitch, but I guess... You backstitch every time. I'm just neurotic. My mind is blown. Is it? Yes. Oh, God. Well, I do, and I think it's still going to be fine, whether you do or you don't. I'm sure it will be. It all works out in the end. Okay, we are going to serge the seam now that we have sewn the... The, the yoke and the bodice together. So, so I'm using an Imagine by Baby Lock. I got it not too long ago. Um, I really like this machine. It's great. It air threads and it does um, auto tension, which is excellent. So I'm still kind of learning this machine, but what I do is I just kind of run my this edge of the of the foot. Um, along this stitching and it's going to cut off the excess. Um, this is a clear foot. I, I bought it and replaced the metal foot because I think the clear is makes things life easier because you can see. You gotta be careful because this thing's crazy. It'll just crank through like nothing and, it, and I lose control so I'm going a little bit slow. You can see there, cut off these threads that I made, finishes the seam quite nicely. And got the, this is the yoke, you can see here, of course <laughs> these, these threads are a nice touch, <laughs> but these are from the gather so I'll cut them off. Um, isn't that pretty? Okay, so you've got to press the seam towards the yoke. Here's the yoke. What I like to do first is actually kind of press the seam, if you will, 
up. Kind of get it up out of the way, if that makes sense. There you go. Be careful because you don't want the seam to kind of show. But you want the, the seam to be up, not down. Up toward the shoulder? Yeah, so up where the yoke is, so you see how you have that nice, looks nice now, right? Mm-hmm. Great. To trace the um, darts onto the fabric, we're using a friction pen, the kind that disappears when you apply heat. And essentially what we're doing is we're being, we're kind of raw here, we're just going through the paper with the pen. <laughs> It's tricky. It is. It's. We tried this we little tried the chalk, chalk pen. We tried this chalk wheel, and usually it's really good about transferring the lines um, and through the paper because it's got these tiny little metal teeth, but it didn't really work. So no, no fabric. We're we're using this pen and just kind of tearing through the paper, um, but it'll get the job done. I think. So this. Is lovely. I guess it's called a fisheye dart. And I'm just gonna transfer all the markings. How's it looking? I don't know. That's great. Fine. Okay, so you can see the little lines, and what we will do is we'll grab a ruler. Let's go to ruler. the She's always talking about rules. I'm always talking about rules. Let's go to our little supply. Grab ourselves. Actually, we'll use this ruler. We we'll use this ruler, and we'll go, and we'll just trace those lines, make them nice and neat. Yeah, that's what she thinks we're doing. <sighs> I forget who I'm dealing with here. What are you doing? I'm just connecting the dots and then I'm checking. This my is work. what you have a ruler for. No. Defiance. <laughs> <laughs> Once you have your darts um, marked, you're going to pin them together. So we have, Katrina's done one for us. And what you want to do is basically bring the right sides of the fabric together so you get a little fold. And the lines that you've drawn in for the darts should match. And how you do that, she's going to show us. I kind of start in the middle, and I just sort of pinch the sides together. Yeah. So that they match up, basically. And then when I put the pin through, I just want to make sure that I'm lining it up with the marks on either side. Mm-hmm. Perfect. So that one looks pretty good. Yeah, so the, you can see that direction. the pen is on this side and it's also on that on the line on the other side so that's how you know they're lined up correctly and she's just going to go ahead and do that all along the dart and then once she's finished penning we'll take it to the machine and show you how to stitch it we're over here at the machine, and Katrina's going to show us how she stitches the um, fisheye dart. So we're starting here at, at the, the dot. At the dot, yeah, at the end, at the hemline, basically, of the bodice. So go ahead. Now, are you going to backstitch, or are you not? I'm not. She doesn't backstitch. Seriously? Your dart's going to come undone. No, it's not. It's going to be in the hem. All right. I, I This makes me just crazed, but okay. She's the one, she's making her blouse. We are not gonna. So she's stitching right on top of that line that she drew in earlier. And one thing that's um, also important to know is how she's pinned it. She's pinned it with the pin heads facing her, so that as she stitches, she can just pull them out as the needle gets closer. So it's not what, a deal breaker if you forget to do not, that. It's not, but it makes your life so much easier. It really does. Yeah. I mean, it's hard because once you get the needle and if you've got the pin head up there, it's like you're yanking it out and doing like 
pin gymnastics or something. So the pin gym. Pin gym. So all you've got to do is just stitch along that line that you've drawn, all starting at the hemline and go all the way to the end where we're going to change the stitch length. Yeah. You now you can back tack at the end of the dart. However, my method and you Katrina's method, me. and I did teach you Torrens. One thing that has stuck <laughs> is changing. It's smart. Yeah, I like it. it. It it is great. You're changing the stitch length to basically like a half, right as you go off of the of the dart. So we'll sh we'll show you how that happens. You're very diligent. Thanks. <laughs> Good job. All right, so about here, I start narrowing it down. Because where is the but where, where do, does the the dart end here? You want to show it us? ends. It ends right where I've put my pin into the fabric, so that where that pin head is. Okay. Yeah. So, so you could keep going a bit more. Probably so I like, like to narrow it and narrow it and narrow oh, it. Oh, is that what you do? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's that's a that's a variation on my technique. But please show. I'm gonna show. Well, us I don't know. I haven't used this machine before. Okay. So on the Bernina, when you want to um, reduce the stitch length, so right now it's at a two and a oh, half, and you're just fancy. gonna go down. See, and right now it's at a one and a half. This machine is really great, by the way, in case anybody's wondering. The only thing I wish it would do is had that little automatic thread chopper. The new 4 Series does that. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be upgrading this machine anytime soon. And you're going down more? Mm -hmm. Okay. Which stitch length are you on? You're like at a, half, at a half now. Now she's at a half because she's coming off of the fabric. And that tiny it. little stitch reinforces, so you, it's not necessary to to back stitch. So tiny, can you see it? Focus. Mm -hmm. All right. So now that you've got the darts sewn, you need to press them, and you're going to press them towards the center. Start by, and I pull, get some tension on that. I'm using a ham because it gives it the right shape. Got the curve. Get some tension on that. Have you talked about your relationship with hams? Hams in the past on your channel? What I don't know what you're talking about. No. Isn't that what that's called? A ham? Yeah. This is a ham. But you've never talked about a ham before? I have. So Emily have... Emily loves ironing. It's not some sh something she used to love, no. but she's really grown. You have to to because love it. This is as if you press as you go. Your it's just going to work better for you, and your your garments are going to look well. And you're very good at it now, and I think this is towards the center, right? So you really I'm worked just it. Kind of, you worked out a that. system with that ham. The ham is awesome. So is the seam roll. <laughs> you need the seam roll. You need a ham, you need a roll, and then you need gravy. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, I want dinner too. Yeah. So this is what you do. Do that to the other one, but you see how you have a nice... It looks so pretty. Doesn't that look pretty? Wait, let Beautiful. me get close on it. Yeah. Yeah, Beautiful see, fish before... Dark, right? And this one isn't done after. Yet. That's really so nice. So nice. So I'm gonna pr press the other one, and then we'll move on to the next step. The second part of step three is to sew, sew the shoulder seams together. So Katrina has laid the back bodice piece and the front bodice piece together, right sides together matching up the shoulder seams and she's and pinning the them together matching the notches so you've got the edges matching up the notches matching up raw edges matching up and then you're just going to go ahead and stitch them together with a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance 
we're going to do that to both and then we're going to serge them just as we did this part and then we'll move on to step four to put in the sleeve band. To prepare the sleeve band um, we're going to take piece 15 and I have one that's prepared here so we have the little dots marked on both sides that's important for when you go to place it on the sleeve but you're taking this piece and you're going to just fold it in half that's all you're going to do like here and then you're going to go and baste this closed on the machine so remember a baste stitch is um, longer so it's like a four and we're going to go ahead and do that and then we will pin them on to the bodice and show you how that's done. Once you've basted the edges of your armbands, we've got to pin it to the armhole. So if you take a look here, you'll see. So we've got the shoulder seam here, and this is the armhole essentially. So what you've got to do is take that armband, right? here and there is a dot on the armband and then there's a little dot on the bodice on the armhole so you're just going to match those up and Katrina is going to show us how she's doing that here's the pens make sure the raw edges match there's a circle here and there's a circle on the back bodice as well that you need to match up to the circles can't really see it's kind of faint but it's there and you have to do this for both sides and then you're just going to stitch that seam and it's going to be a 5 8 inch seam so Katrina will go ahead and pin both sides stitch both sides together and we will be back to show you what that looks like uh -huh. so we do have some extra tips before we stitch because we've Trina's did point out a few things that we should probably share with you. As you pin it you want to make sure that you are just ever so slightly adjusting the arm band to fit the curve of the arm hole and that is accommodated by the fact that the arm band has been sewn on a bias mm -hmm. and so when you fold it it's got that nice biased flexibility and so you should be able to um, to make it match the curve, just the very gentle curve of the armhole. Awesome, thanks. So we have stitched the armbands to the arms, and actually on one side we've completely finished it, the entire side seam arm, and we kind of veered a little bit away from the instructions. I um, mean, you know, we're using a serger and let's see, so you can see you want to put it on like the side here. So, first thing you do is as we already said is that you're stitching these armbands to the um bodice. Yeah, to the bodice, sorry. I can't use my words. And then but you still have this part, which is the, technically the side seam. That's still open. Mm -hmm. So what you have to do is put it together. But we surged this Yeah, first. we surged this edge. Mm -hmm. This is the armhole. This mm -hmm. is the armband. Right. We went ahead and we surged that, made it nice and clean. And then you and press then it out you, after you surge it. Yep. Then you press it out, make it nice and neat. And, and the next thing is exactly up. is matching up the basically just matches. matching up the side seams, right? Side seams. Mm-hmm. So you've got hems matching, you're gonna match the notch, and then you've got your un this is your underarm. And then make sure that after you've surged this um, hem that or no edge. After you've searched this, you want to make sure that it's pressed down this way mm -hmm. um, and pinned down for when you sew, so that you're sewing this down the correct direction. 
Yeah, you don't want it going that way and then you'll have like a bump under your underarm and it won't sit right. Right, and since I'm the kind of person who doesn't backstitch all the time, I <laughs> I only backstitch when there is it when when there when the let oh the end of this <laughs> thread the, yeah. yeah when the end of the thread is with inside a seam I don't backstitch. However, this does need to be backstitched because mm -hmm. you're going to run up against this edge here, and there's no hem to protect it. So you need to have that backstitch all the way down. Da, 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 da. So this is the armband sewn on, and we have surged that edge. You just went in like that. But you now we've got to press it so that this seam is pressed inside the um, the bodice or the shirt. Keep it nice. I like using my ham fist. I just love my ham. <laughs> If you love your ham, let me know in the comments below. <laughs> Honk if you love ham. <laughs> so it's nice and pressed. And as you can see, we have the neckline there. This is the nice armband. And when it comes down to our side seam. So Katrina, why don't you flip it over? Oh, this yeah. Way. You guys, bubbly, this is what keeps me sewing right here. We go and so put the two side seams together. So we're going to show you how she's just folding that. See, there you go. There's your nice armhole. See, you can visualize it now. You got this guy. It's gonna match that up. I'm gonna make sure that these mm -hmm. are both down. Yeah, make sure this is key right here. Making sure that these are this is nice and flat because it gets a little wonky. So that's really important that you keep that nice and flat. So we've got the <coughs> bodice placed in here. That's the hem starting. She's starting there. She's gonna go all the way up, and we're going five eighths of an inch. Put my needle down, lift up my foot, make sure I've got everything pressed under the foot as I keep going. Maybe I'm going to turn this a little. Mm -hmm. There you go. Keep it all lined up. Mm -hmm. She's keeping it taut to help it um, not get all wrinkly underneath that presser foot. Slowly. I'm gonna remove my needle. Because the way the layers kind of join up in that I'm underarm, this. I guess I'm gonna put that down. the way the the layers join up on the underarm seam, underarm seam, it kind of makes things a little funky. Sometimes you just gotta put your needle down, lift your presser foot up, smooth things out, and just take your time. Okay, and here we're gonna back stitch. Nope. Let's take a look at our bodice so far. So look at that. I mean, these sleeves, the cute little detail with the the gathering. And let's just spin her around. And the nice fisheye darts. Here we have the facing pieces. So we've got these attached to the neckline or the, the wrap piece of the, the bodice. And this is the back. What you want to do is, you know, right sides together. You're attaching these and you're just gonna sew right here and then right here. And then once they're, these pieces are attached, then you can go ahead and finish the unnotched edges of these pieces so the notched edges are here so you'll go all the way around 
and finish these so it will be like this once it's sewn all the way around all the way around for us that's going to be surging because we're finishing our um, seams and edges with the serger so first things first let's go attach these pieces together and then we can go ahead and serge the outer edge. Isn't it a thing of beauty? It is our facing. It is attached, it is finished, and it is ready to be attached to the bodice. We have the bodice on the dress form and we just thought it would be easier to show you how this is attached what you've got to do is, you know, right sides together. Make sure that you're matching the notches. So there's notches here on the front, right? Then there's some notches down here. So you're matching here. those and you're pinning along, along, along. But it's also really important, if you can, to try to match up these seams. So when you sew them, they match. It's always nice to have that finish. Except nobody sees the facing, so don't sweat it. <sighs> but then you're, <laughs> less you're mean, you're neurotic, and you have to match them. But she's right. No one's really going to notice, except you. So, just go ahead, pin it all the way around, and then once you're done pinning, you're going to sew it together, five-eighths of an inch all the way around. Once you have the facing attached to the bodice, you can see it here, it's attached. Um, you go ahead and notch it all the way around. It'll help it lay flat and smooth. Now there is supposed to be a gap here where the facing is. Um, it doesn't go all the way to the bottom. I think we might have said earlier you line up from edge to edge. We may have said that, I don't remember, but that is not the case. You need to um, focus on matching your notches and then go all the way around from there and you will find that there is um, some room here. You started at the shoulder seams. That yeah. That's a good tip. Starting at the shoulder seams and then matching the notches down here is, is the best way, it seems. So there is supposed to be a gap. We are going to figure that part out because the instructions are not exactly clear. In fact, it doesn't really talk too much about hemming this. Um, it doesn't talk at all about it. Hemming. It doesn't really. I mean, it just says it's like we're supposed to. Step. Yeah, and I mean the instructions. So you you're supposed to like cut this out and then layer the seam or something or the it's it's kind of we're still figuring it out and this is just how it is using commercial patterns. <laughs> right? I mean, there's there's always something that yes. we're that we get hung I'm up on. <laughs> at how this happens every time. <laughs> every no time there's where something. It's like, okay, that was not clear in yeah, any way, shape, or form. Yeah, it's like right form. here. You see how? Is it there? No, it's here. See how the facing is here, and it doesn't go all the way down. You're supposed to like kind of take some out. So, stitcher, so we're going to figure this out and maybe we don't do it how it's supposed to, but we're going to get it done and it's going to be okay. Here we have the facing attached to the bodice. The next thing you're going to want to do is to put some understitching in. An understitching is just a row of stitching right on along the seam line on the side of the facing. So when you're stitching, you're ac the stitches are actually going to go through the facing and the seam allowance. Okay, so it's going to be opened like that. And you want to make sure you don't get anything else caught up in there. And you're going to go all the way around and again these stitches prevent help prevent the facing from rolling over to the front side of the garment. And I have an, a special foot called an edge stitch foot, which really makes this easy. Um, and I'll show you on the Bernina. Mm -hmm. One thing real quick that will help is to press it open like this first before you do your, um, your stitching. It'll just make it nice and neat. Okay. 
Okay, so I have switched out to my number 10 foot. If you want to get in here and show them. See how there's a blade here? This blade makes it really easy to guide the, the um, sorry, the fabric. If I keep my blade along that seam line, it'll make it easy for me to understitch. And I just need to move my needle over a couple positions to the right so that it will stitch right along. Maybe I'll even do it three. So it's going to do a nice stitch right along the line or the seam line there. I'm going to back stitch that just to reinforce it. So see, I'm keeping my fabric, or I'm sorry, my blade right on that seam line. And the stitches are going ever so slightly off to the right of that seam line in through the facing and the seam allowance. So as you're going, you want to feel and make sure that that seam allowance is on the side of the facing. Sometimes it can get bunched up and you don't want that to happen. So just do this all the way around the entire facing and it's good to keep it taut, to keep it pulled a bit. Just nice and smooth and keep going all the way around and then we'll be done. Let's take a look at what we have so far. So we have the facing in as as you can see this is the the understitching what keeps it from popping out. Though I do recommend tacking this part down onto the seam allowance in here. So we're going to do that on both sides to help keep this tucked in on the curve because that can be problematic. Okay. Moving on to the belt. You have four pieces to make the belt. You're going to attach two together. So you've got right sides together and then you're going to go ahead and stitch them 5 8 seam right there. And once you do that, you'll go ahead and press them open, press the seam open like that. And then you've got two longer pieces now. And what you'll do is you'll put them right sides together. This is pretty simple. Put the belts right sides together and then stitch all around, but this time you're using 3 eighths of a seam of a seam allowance and you're going to leave an opening of about 3 inches, 2 inches um, so that you can turn the tie inside out. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch my belt pieces together and then we'll turn it inside out and show you how to finish it. Once you stitched your belts together, you turn it right sides out and you remember you have a little opening down in one place that's about two inches or so. I'm using a little knitting needle and you just go through and you use it to kind of pop out your corners gently. Pop them out. I've already done it to the other side and then I'm going to go and iron out this belt. So I like to do that by kind of like pulling it taut and then using the iron to press it down. That makes it easier. And then once you've done that, you've got your little opening and you're going to slip stitch, which is hand stitch this close. And then you've got your, your belt. So we're not entirely convinced that the instructions provided in the pattern are the best or even accurate. Um, it, things just didn't seem to really jive, so we're just making it work ourselves. Um, what she's doing is rolling up the hem, so you did what, a quarter inch fold in mm -hmm. and then a quarter inch fold back up. Mm -hmm. It's just basically a really narrow hem and if you recall the instructions I believe said to like 
cut this out or showed it cut out and then it just didn't make any sense. We ended up not cutting that we out. We didn't cut it out. It's already it just, shorter than the rest of the shirt, so. To me, I feel like you would want this. Like you'd want this covered. Or, I don't know. Sometimes these the pattern instructions are not very clear or in my opinion not the best way to do things. So sometimes you just go with your gut, you go with your instinct and then draw upon previous experience and just do what works for you. Doesn't mean it's wrong, it just works for you. And this it's gonna look good. Alright, so here is the finished garment, and I have pulled the wrapping front into place the way it'll lay as it is on my body and I am going to now instead of using ribbons or buttons to secure it in place I want to make sure that at three points this wrap top is very securely fastened and will not surprise me by falling open at any point during the day as I wear it so I want to add hooks and eyes in these three contact points, here are the hooks and eyes that I will be using. Wow. Um, I'm going to attach, I'm going to attach the layer that lays underneath the front here, under here, with a hook and eye. And I'm going to attach here where it wraps across the front with a hook and eye. And then I'm also going to secure the neckline with a hook and eye because I'm very modest and I never want to show cleavage. I'm just like that. And so I'm going to make sure that this has no excuse to fall open either. So I'm going to just hand sew those on right now. Wish me luck. Okay, so this is the blouse on the dress form. Here you can see that the hook and eye has been attached for up top. I actually have just the smallest little stitch right here. I mostly sewed it through the uh, facing, but I did want to make sure that I was slightly tacking the facing down. So there's just the teensiest little stitch that you can't even see, really, tacking it to the outside of the blouse. I don't know if I love that or not. Um, I might redo it but we'll see how it looks. Um, I also have down here this hook and eye sewn to the inside panel and then also to the outer panel and that I tried to hide the actual stitches from the hook and eye underneath these two dots. It just sort of worked out well so they're basically invisible. Um, but this will be covered by the belt sash, so I'm not sure that it'll matter too much if you can see those stitches on the outside. Um, and then here, the front panel um, crosses over and attaches with this hook and eye here. This is hard to do one-handed. And then... Once you have it here hanging, you can um, wrap the belt around, which is what I'm about to do. You can say hi. <laughs> hi. I'm going to show your skirt first. So, so. Oh, yeah. yes. I'm actually wearing um, this skirt. I made Berta Style 6319 using an Alexander Henry Flamingo print, cotton. Um, so I just finished this today with the ties. But most importantly, we have finished this morning this wonderful wrap blouse, and it came out so nicely. I mean, it's just it's adorable. I want one. I want. The fabric is great. It's from Joann's. I think it's poly, is it polyester. 90% poly, 10% spandex. Got and, a little tiny stretch. And it's just, it's so soft, and it's so drapey, and it's just absolutely wonderful for, for this pattern. Um, I th I'm really pleased with how it came out. I think it looks really professional. So we give ourselves a pop. Come, come look at this. Let's look here. We've got the gathers here. We've got the lovely sleeve band. And there is a yoke here at the shoulder seam. It wraps around. So this tie is um, 
It's actually separate. The tie it's is separate. not attached yes. to the shirt, which I actually kind of like. I like that too. And in the pattern called for, as Katrina said earlier, either buttons or ribbon to keep this in place, but she chose to use hooks and eyes, which I, I like that idea. And when I make this, would, and I will, and, and you can see this too, one's slightly exposed, but it's so easy to just cover yeah. it with the belt, so you really won't see it. All in all, I think this pattern from New Look, it's New Look 6560, I think the pattern until the end when we had to figure out how to properly hem it, I mean, it's, it's an awesome pattern. It went together very well. We had to finagle the hem, as I just said, but it's a, it's a great piece and I do recommend it um I think what for like intermediate sewers maybe I mean I think if you watch this video we kind of yeah. talk you through anything so maybe a beginner could do this um yeah it's just tricky because sometimes the, the the commercial pattern instructions are just not clear they omit things and we did have that problem mm -hmm. but we worked through it and you can't tell it's gorgeous yeah I'm really pleased with Fish it I can't wait Mm -hmm. So, yeah, go get this pattern, make it. Follow us on Instagram, SoCal Socialite, and tag us in all of your makes so we can see what you've done. Thanks Thank for you. Watching.